Arid and semi-arid lands cover over 89% of Kenyan landmass. These areas are highly vulnerable to climate change and climate variability, leading to increasing levels of poverty, human conflict, among other impacts. Many of those living in these areas rely on livestock farming and in particular cattle. However, in the recent past, Climate change has increased the frequency and severity of drought in the Kenya Assos with resultant fodder and water shortages and soil erosion in the grazing lands. This has had a devastating impact on livestock farmers leading to low milk and meat productivity, which are the main components of pastoralists' diet contributing to food and nutritional insecurity. Cactus, uh, or rather the prickly cactus, is also referred to as opuntia. And it's one of the most popular horticultural plant groups with worldwide introduction outside their native ranges for ornamental purposes or as drought tolerance crops. We find that these are plant species that are uh, well adapted to arid and semi-arid areas due to their high tolerance to drought or high temperatures. We find that cactus is also quite uh, adapted to soils with poor fertility. And we realize that this cactus is not a native plant species in Kenya. Livestock quality deteriorates and in the event of prolonged droughts, the pastoralists lose their livestock in large numbers. It is estimated that over 25% of cattle population is lost during drought due to pasture and water scarcity. In an attempt to adapt to this longer and less predictable droughts, the government and non-governmental organizations encourage the keeping of camels in the assholes as a coping strategy in grappling with the vagaries of climate change. So we teamed up with Professor Jos Dubio of the University of Florida uh, who is also a specialist in, in forages, and also uh, Professor Gashwiri and Professor Joyce Maina of the University of Nairobi. The project is funded by Dry Grow Foundation, a non-profit organization founded by Walter Scroth and is based in Leichenstein. Dry Grow supports research on sustainable utilization of cactus and engage with communities in arid regions to adapt cactus for animal fodder is set up in such a way that we decided to hire or to recruit a master's degree student who was able to collect data on the feeding trials of the camels and to show that actually the feeding uh, of uh, cactus to camels was going to increase both the quantity and also the quality uh, of the camel meal. Camels are the most drought-resistant livestock able to withstand long periods of extreme drought and still produce milk all year round, thriving on little or no water for long periods. Camel milk is composed of lactose, fat and protein in roughly the same proportion as cow's milk. However, it has high contents of vitamin C and high mineral contents and can be good nutritional source for the people living in the arid zones.
Camel milk has been dubbed as the new white gold superfood due to its antimicrobial, antiviral, anti-diabetic, anti-arthritis and anti-hypertensive properties and is safe for children with cow's milk allergy. This highly nutritious and therapeutic properties of camel milk have made it gain popularity and is better priced than cow or goat milk. As a result, there is a growing number of Kenyans keeping camels in assholes. So our main aim is that uh, if we can sh show and we have shown that actually consumption of the invasive cactus by the camels has been able to increase the milk production and we realize that one camel is able to consume between 20 and 30 kilograms of cactus in a day. This means that if we can able to bring more and more lactating camels to consume these cactus, with time we'll be able to bring cactus under control and this will be a strategy to manage and control the cactus. Camel milk now contributes 35 to 40 percent of household income in some of the communities in the Assos, even during periods of prolonged droughts. It is estimated that there are now around 3 million camels in Kenya, three times as many 10 years ago. However, one of the challenges of camel rearing is still a shortage of fodder, especially during periods of prolonged drought. In the Kenyan assholes, during periods of prolonged and intense drought, goats and sheep have been observed to be very fond of prickly cactus pear fruit, particularly when new flowers appear. Cattle and camel are able to feed on cactus pads. However, the spines and glottids can cause irritation, swelling and injuries to the tongue and mouth, an affliction referred to as cactus tongue. Prickly pear has to be processed by completely crushing the spines in cladodes or pads to produce a thick pulp that is fed to animals. La Bomeras, a Brazilian agricultural machinery company, has developed a machine that is able to completely crush the cactus spine.
Currently, we are using cactus to feed camels. But we realize that in other countries like Brazil and Mexico, actually cactus is used as a fodder for dairy cattle. So it is our, uh, going forward, uh, we are thinking that if we'll be able to use the invasive cactus as fodder, then it will also give us an opportunity to be able to introduce the spineless cactus. Because we realize most of our dairy farmers, the main challenge they have is actually feed. And since this is a plant that actually grows in dry areas, it will be able to bring down the cost of production of feed and then support or be able to be used by dairy farmers uh, 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 to boost up the milk production. So this is a plant that is not only be used for camels, we can use it even for dairy, for beef, even for other animals. Project has been working with farmers groups that keep camel in Doldol in Laikipia, Rimoi in Carrier Valley since 2018. These arid areas with high prevalence of invasive prickly cactus. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.